What's going on guys? I got an awesome custom project for you today that I wanted to show you. I've got one of my custom hollow tele bodies. It is a full body that's been completely hollowed out with this template. I showed this in another video of how I actually do this. And this is one of those awesome redwood tops from Kimball Hardwoods. I got a nice surprise in here that I'm going to show you once I get going. But first off, we're going to do a black stain on this redwood with some Angelo Slather dyes. You can purchase the Angelo Slather dyes in the link below. We're going to do like a faded black burst on this redwood. Redwood is an amazing wood. One of my faves. I love working with it. We're going to put a nice thick coat of black dye on here and we're going to stain the black back the back black as well it's poplar hollowed it out we're going to feed all the control wiring through here and have a completely solid hollow body with no sort of control cavity routes or covers that we need to place on we're going to do some fishing that i'll show you once we get all of this done Redwood is a little bit dentable, so whatever sort of nicks and scratches that come with it, just got to roll with it as you start working with it. Put two coats on of this black. It's really soaking up this dye. It's very soft, so the dye absorbs in. This just has some beautiful grain lines running through it. I was really nerdy. I'd count it and tell you how old it is. I'm not gonna do that. Thick coat of black dye on the back. I chose poplar because of what I'm doing with this body. The black is gonna look really cool. And I'm not gonna do any fading or whatever on the back. I'm just gonna leave it and poplar accepts dye really nicely. What's really nice about poplar is if you let it sit for a while, it sort of browns up, all those greens turn to brown. This is a one piece poplar back. So as this ages up a little bit with the dye, it'll turn more of a black and a brown. You can see on the end grain here, the black absorbs nicely. It's going for exactly what I want. All right, let's see what the face looks like. Looks pretty good. What we'll do is we'll let this dry for about 24 hours, maybe less. Maybe we'll hit it tonight. We're going to come back and sand just a little bit of this out in a uh, teardrop shape. And then we'll hit it with some sanding sealer. We'll do four coats of sanding sealer. I'm going to use a satin finish. And then I'll show you the trick here next. All right, so after we sanded, we're gonna take the rag with all the dye on it and we're gonna just dip it in some Angelus Neutral and we're gonna just re-wipe on the edges. I saw a couple scratches that I wanted to clean up. One here and one up there. And there's enough dye on here to fix 
all the issues. So this makes it just a little bit darker after cleaning up all the sanding. It's hard to get the sanding even sometimes. I don't really like doing this a lot because sometimes the neutral leaves a little bit of a um, blotchiness. So I'm, I'm careful with that. Here I'm going to be able just to dilute what's in the wood. I'm going to come back with some steel wool in the middle and I'll get the look I'm going for. But you can see I've sort of faded out some of the really dark black dye. I've gotten the flame and the figure to pop. But yet it's still darker. And when I come back with the steel wool, it'll be perfect. Really want it to be darker on the edge. So I'll rub this in like this. So the figure sort of runs out as you get to about here. When I cut the piece, you can kind of tell. That's why specifically went with the T-style body here. You can see I'm getting a little bit of a streak as I'm moving it. But the color is outstanding on this. Got all the scratches out. some reason I can't get the black dye up here right. It's pretty close to what I really want. Nice dark black, but you can still see the figure. I may or may not hit it with the steel wool. <laughs> we'll, let, we'll let this dry and see what it looks like, but you can see the black is nice and black on the front and the back. So we get some fine grade steel wool and begin to rub out the black. This is the trick to get the dye off the top that's sitting on the top of the wood, not in the wood. The fine grade steel wool helps pull that out and you get the figure and the grain lines and this is what I call getting the top to pop. You got to do this and you got to take that little bit of dye out. It makes a huge difference. I'm vacuuming up as I do this. We're then going to do four coats of sanding sealer here. This is Mohawk pre catalyzed sanding sealer. I already have two coats on and I'm coming on with a thicker coat. If you don't apply sanding sealer, you're not locking in the color. This helps lock in the color and you can put on whatever finish you want after this. A heavy 2K, a light true oil, this way you don't get a mess. So then after we get this all set up, we're gonna rewind and show you the trick. I've got a whole bunch of glow-in-the-dark paints and I tried getting this to work and it just wasn't sticking. So I came back with some white paint and then I found a different glow-in-the-dark paint. I put four coats of glow-in-the-dark paint around where I'm going to do the Raven inlay. So the four coats of paint really help get the light to pop. We're gonna then apply some hide glue, liquid hide glue from Type Bond. And we're gonna take this over to the wine press clamp and clamp it down. This hide glue gets really good reviews, so I'm going to start using it and see how it works. Press this on, screw it in, take this over to the wine press clamp, and go. Make sure that the lines are set, and one of them wasn't right, so I just moved it over again. This is my easel template then. I take 
half of the body and drop it on the left so I've got the center line running through and then I can route the Raven on the upper side. This took about an hour and a half and I didn't have much luck. I broke five bits. This is a 1 32nd bit and it was snapping off which was a huge pain. I should have used a 1 16th bit but then I wouldn't have got as much detail work. So the router kept stopping. Uh, I had to stop it actually and then sort of re restart. The trick is to not turn off the machine, just to pop the router out and put the new bit in. It actually worked okay. So then here are the pictures. This is unglowed, then glowed with my light. This is up close. I'm a little worried about those inlays that they may break at some point. Here's another close up. And then here's the money shot. This is it charged and in a dark room. And it looks actually really cool. The inlay is pretty neat. So thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy. And remember, the light is in you.